I'm going to um, I'm going to pick poem, um, poems here and there, uh, without any reference to uh, to uh, to chronology. I'll tell you their uh, their period, um, or roughly their period, but. Um, I am not going to keep necessarily to chronology at all, at all. Now, I read translations, and the translations I read are my own translations. And, um, um, well, whether they are poems in their own right is a matter of opinion. Um, the translations. Now, I read the English translations first. Uh, because I think that gives more of a chance to uh, to people who don't know Gaelic. Um, I read a poem that, um, which is really a dream poem to begin with. It was composed. It was made in December nineteen thirty-nine. In rather tragic circumstances, or what I thought were very tragic circumstances. And as some people uh, have said, though some people have said uh, it is a poem about poetry, it isn't at all, at all. Uh, I read it, Dogs and Wolves, that's the English title. Across eternity, across its snows, I see my unwritten poems, I see the spoor of their paws dappling the untroubled whiteness of the snow. Bristles raging, bloody tongue, lean grounds and wolves leaping over the top of the dikes, running under the shade of the trees of the wilderness, taking the defile of narrow glens, making for the steepness of windy mountains, their baying gales shrieking across the hard burnaces of the terrible times, their everlasting barking in my ears, their onrush seizing my mind, career of wolves and eerie dogs, swift in pursuit of the quarry through the forests without veering over the mountain tops without shearing, the mild mad dogs of poetry, wolves in chase of beauty, beauty of soul and face, a white deer over hills and plains, the deer of your gentle, beloved beauty, a hunt without halt, without respite. The Gaelic is um, Coin is Mati Nali. Harnishiariach Karashnechke, Himimagan Yoyechke, Himilorokan and Spoke, a Brechke, Gilahuim, the Hundrechke. Kalakar Vola Chang of Halakar Hulas Matinali, Lame Har Mulakin and Garag, Rufus Kal and Grun Fasel, a Kal Kong Nungu Glam, the Shiru Kashat Nungu Vyam, a Wang and Kalan of Hashianel, Har Loman Croyd and Aum Kianel, and Hortik Vivan Machlosen, and Yang Ria Kal Mavogan. Raish na matus na honi urkal lo her torach kan yagi thorn a kail chin kan yaru har mulik na mian kan yaru kan hiun ya kuhik na bardach mati na thorn a halach halach kan nanamas na udin fia gal har vian na zun chin fia ta voich kuhun ya kuhlach fia kan skur kan uchug. Now I'll. It was December 1939. It was written in very strange and rather, rather, in what I thought was terrible circumstances. I got up at three o'clock in the morning and wrote down the whole thing without, without um, changing a line, or hardly, uh, without changing a line afterwards. Um, this is a little poem of the thirties too. The impact on me of the industrial lowlands, the big cities, Glasgow and Edinburgh in nineteen twenty nine, nineteen thirty, during the time of the Great Depression. I had been brought up and probably the strictest fundamentalist and most evangelical sect in 
Scotland, perhaps in the world. Calvary. My eye is not on Calvary, nor on Bethlehem, the blessed, but on a foul-smelling backland in Glasgow, where life rots as it grows. And on a room in Edinburgh, a room of poverty and pain, where the deceased infant writhes and wallows till death. The Gaelic is when you're with Hooler, Calvary, nor Bethlehem, and I, a her cool, rotting loss of her for a villa log, Farge. I guess a shomer on the region, shomer pochkins cry, for a villainy and crech, a crean, a crech covas. I'll read a different kind of poem now. This would be in, I think, written in the summer or the spring of 39. Kinloch Einart, a kind of semi surrealist impression of a mountainous part of sky in a storm of wind, rain, um, um, what the Gaelic would call a day of the seven elements, um, where you see the mountains appearing with swirling mist and as, as if they were actually moving. A company of mountains, an upthrust of mountains, a great garth of growing mountains, a concourse of summits, of knolls, of hills, coming on with a fearsome roaring, a rising of glens, of gloomy corries, a lying down on the antlered bellowing, a stretching of green nooks, of brook mazes, prattling in the age-old midwinter, a cavalry of mountains, horse-riding summits, a streaming headlong haste of foam, a slipperiness of smooth flat rocks, small bellied bare summits, flat rocks snoring of high mountains, a surge belt of hilltops, impetuous thigh of peaks, the murmuring bareness of marching turrets, green flanks of muskery crumbling storm flanks, barbarous pinnacles of high moorlands. I'll read the Gaelic, Calmo Heinert. Call on Fountain, Stoichach Fountain, Corlys Fountain, Fosfer, Crudochug, Bullachin, Hulachin, Lave, Jin, Chin, Savaych, Gavi, Eri Glountain, Horachan Utle, Wires of Ru, Vuri, Krachig, Sheenach, Wanyakan, Wanyakan, Strulach, Breedles and Ulach, Garshi, Echri Glountain, Markach, Wullachin, Jangri, Runach, Kahir, Slyonach, Lechken and Schengach, Krechen in Straunrich, Lechken and Hartfern, and Conorris, Hulich in Monor, Loim, Horich, Horich in Marshall, Goromlis and Voskari, Staremlis and Moskenach, Borob, Vit and Vonny in Arthur. Um, I'll read um, one poem. It's a love poem. Uh, it's called Dawn in, in Gaelic Cavani. Dawn is a translation in English. Um, it has mentioned the Coolin Hills and, and the Clorach, which is a very beautiful stretch of water, the southern part of the Sound of Rasias, between Rasi and Sky. But the Cavani, uh, no, I'll read, I'll read the English translation first. You were Dawn on the Coolin. On benign day on the Clara, the sun on his elbow on the golden stream, and the white rose that breaks the horizon, glitter of seas on a sunlit firth, blue of the sea, uh, and aureate sky, the young morning in your head of hair and in your clear, lovely cheeks. My jewel of dawn on night, your face and your dear kindness, though the grey stake of misfortune is thrust through the breast of my young morning. The cavani, but thou cavani, here a hulli and slasuli, there a hori, Grian era hulli, yams and oru, vagus rose, galp, priest, you father. Lanyer hyol ar ding a griani, gorom a chua in yas i arma jarvoi, in oog vatin at a chua lens, at a gruai in sgair alin. Moleg cavanich is aich a tud in stachain as gragach, get a bir glas in oog a strachlia moog maichin a saatje. Now, I'll read, um, I'll read at least one more poem. 
This war poem um, is called Gaelic Glochgavage, Death Valley. I suppose in the western and Libyan deserts there were many places called Death Valleys by the British soldiers. This was a particular one where we were in July 1942. There was an abortive counteroffensive and an awful lot of casualties on both sides. Among them, there was a boy, a German boy, sitting. He was sitting on the edge of a slit trench. He looked awfully young, not more than. He didn't look 50, more than 15, I suppose he was, more than that. There wasn't a mark on him. He must have been killed by shell blast or mine blast or something like that. And he was actually sitting with his feet in the slit trench. Uh, in a caption, some Neds or others said that the Führer had restored to German men of the right and joy of dying in battle. Sitting dead in Death Valley below the Ruizet Ridge, a boy with his forelock down about his cheek and his face slate grey, I thought of the right and the joy that he had from his Führer, of falling in the field of slaughter to rise no more, of the pomp and the fame that he had not alone, though he was the most piteous to see in a valley gone to seed with flies about grey corpses on a dun sand, dirty yellow and full of the rubbish and fragments of battle, was the boy of the band who abused the Jews and communists, or of the greater band of those led from the beginning of generations unwillingly to the trial and mad delirium of every war for the sake of rulers. Whatever his desire or mishap, his innocence or malignity, he showed no pleasure in his death below the Ruiz at Ridge. The Gaelic caption reads, Hurt Nasar Horikin, Kanuka Fora, Rash, the Irnak Arama, the Horagas, the Sonas, Pass, the Nasanari. Now, who you marry, when Gleich Gavash for Grim Ruiz, Edge, Gilog, so Loch and Shears, my Gruai, so who are Grisian. Smoonish me a horse and dog, a whoever over, we took him on the run and arc and airy to you. Er a groanach is er a chloonach to a rena oonar get bashin bavronach is snoag and then gleich ger loom a glick kulak and mochurich glas er can eich lachgin si salach voyas land the reps the sprulli kaha the rain gilla er an raum a vamp ne huish ne komanich no er an raum bavo Use an horrific of a hosha hal, gunjon, kupuare, and sprawl, and kuhika far, eska, who a crown. Kepe yons and no has, and no hunters, no veron, had an och get holoch and a vas for groim ruiz edge. Now I'm going to read a bit of a longer poem, a fairly recent poem, no, not very recent, about five or six years ago. Um, it's called, it's a long poem and I can only read a very small bit of it. It's called, um, in English, The Cave of Gold, and it deals with the legend of um, the piper going into the cave of gold. Now, there are many reasons, different reasons given for his going into the cave of gold. And, um, of course, the three most famous that I know, caves of gold, are two in sky, one in the northwest of sky where the Macrimon piper goes in, and one in the north, well, the northeaster sky where the MacArthur Piper of the MacDonalds goes in, and there's one in Mull where a MacKinnon Piper goes in. Now, reasons given for his going to the Cave of Gold, which is haunted by a monster, which is the green bitch, um, a very different. Reasons given are very different. 
And um, according to the legend, the um, piper is heard playing and um, according to many legends, certain people can understand what the pipes are saying. And among other things, he sees that he will never return until the little goat kids are goats on the rocks, until the, until the calves are rotting cows, until the sons at breast are armed men. He also in a change, he also says that um, he bewails his lack of three hands, two to the pipes and one to the sword. And of course, uh, he says that he will not, the pipe says that he, that, um, that he will not return, that his own people have deserted him, and of course that he is wearied and the word wearied is far too weak a word to translate the Gaelic Saric by the green bitch. But his own dog goes out, to, a dog of his own goes too. She, the piper never comes back. The dog, which is a bitch too, comes back without a hair. Now I place it, I make the, the, the piper, I'm a criminal piper, and um, I place it in the MacLeod land on the northwest of Sky, looking away towards the Cullens in the south southeast. Right there, uh, and the poem is really concerned with extremes of behaviour. A man went into the cave of gold and bewailed his lack of three hands, that two of them were not on the pipes and the other on the sword. A cry came from the cave itself, the pipe shouting his farewell, while the young ghosts, uh, goats and calves were loud and uncaring on the ridge. The infants were asleep or crawling on the soft floors, where no lowing of calf was heard or kid bleating on the bray. The eyes of the armed men were where the blue boat is upturned, her keel the notched teeth of a saw between Ronagloch and Glamach. The upturned boat is a cool enough. Would man or woman understand the complaint and defiance of the pipes? And did McCrimmon himself hear the whining of the larking bitch? What put him where there was no waiting, nor reaching, nor returning, with no voice from sea or land to tell what was in the quest? Why did he leave the land of MacLeod, the green braes and the lochs, the headlands, the islands and the shores, the bread, the flesh and the wine, and that big boat on the horizon, the cullen, where it all was was? Why did he leave the land of MacLeod when the honey and spices were on his lips and the bees in his ears, the love-making, the praise and the music, the sweet promises and the rewards and the soft, eloquent words of the drink? Who else would leave the land of MacLeod to free from the poor wretch's labour, not pierced by wounded pride, strong, fortunate, happy young, not flayed with the water of humiliation, and not pursued by the fury of remorse? His blind man was a knot on the perch between his heart and his brain, pounding nature with a churn stuff, turning the milk to blood and the buttermilk to a slush in the slippery edge of the pit. Why did he leave the land and go away at all? There was no summons to quit, there was no scourge on earth, but the shy faint word between the brain and the heart that the brain said to the flesh before the heart was moved, that there was no treasure too, that there was no satisfaction at all until he felt the bend that comes from the heart smithy. He did not wait for the sun of the morrow on the, on the marm as pure and clear as it ever was until it went in the sea with no shadow on its face. 
He do not wait for the current that clears the heart at high water, and he forgot the way the day has of touching the grey glue with gold. He do not see the moon yellow and big stooped above the coolin, her footsteps coins of gold melted and seed in the brine. He do not see its rising on the store. By the way, his blind man is a famous Donald Monroe. Um, in 1805, the great evangelical revival came to Skye, brought by a man called Farhersham. Previous to that, the Skye Presbyterian clergy were moderates, cultured men mostly of the landlord class, and uh, not very few of them, not in the least evangelical. Now, Donald Munro, the most famous man in sky history in the 19th century. He died in 1930. He's supposed to have gone blind at the age of 14 with smallpox. And uh, in the moderate days before the coming of Farhurshan and the great evangelical revival, he was a catechist, that is, a lay preacher, and he, he went about, and when he went, he brought his fiddle with him. But of course, when... Uh, when he experienced the, um, the the great change with evangelical revival and Farhurshan, um, he not only burnt his own fiddle, but persuaded a great number of people to bring a mountain of bagpipes and fiddles to the head of Rosneasard and Sky to burn them. He and Roderick MacLeod, the minister, were the most famous skymen of the great evangelical revival. And of course the blind Monroe, um, people came from the outer isles and many other parts of the highlands to see him. Um, that's the blind... Now, I'm, um, I'm not of time to read all the garlic that I read the English of. I first I go on or is he a geek and three one the Hroga you want to feed because in hell is a while. And a good on the one hand a feed because a hurry get the main vicar a gisloy go lover coma eraviaro. The meek go guns and hua in a mark a learn a lot of hooker for a coin to game a loy no main you make it a hair brewy. Soul and for Fechka, for a well and cheer, Coram, a beal fepe, a dream, a fear, clon, nicker, sad, et a ron and clock as clamic. And took it for no benamach, gara gara in the stool on the peeper, I guess the hook mach cream in hain, millerich, the gala yogi. Jay Horashin, for a raw, for a no royach, no chilly, skinner, goofa bono cheer against Javis and Hero. Kashanagaka to Shah Clark, no bruik in Goromus, no Lohan, no Rowan, and the Helen is no Trian and Tara and Yals and Fian, San Hermor at Teranar and Kulehan for Roeria. Kashanagaka to Shah Clark, a Wilson species of a villain, I guess no Shillian and a Hoas and a Sugris and Mollocks and Yall, no Galleon, Binus and the Ocean, a Spreet, a Lover and Oil. Coelagaga to your clouds, can any cosnug in your jerke, scanneca virulish an art and a raha larger, a son of oak, can ala can ala leushkin a tarmage, scan verve and narrahish ir a hoar. I think that's enough of the galley. I haven't read all the all that I have read the English of. But now I'm going to read another bit of another fairly recent, fairly recent and longish poem called Scrapital. Scrapital is a place um, in Rarsi. Actually, quite a lot of my own Maclean ancestors were there. It was cleared to make way for sheep. Wonderfully beautiful house. Now, it's in the east of Rossi, and opposite it is Apple Cross, where there's a sanctuary of St. Mulroa. Um, where is St. Mulroa, from which you get Loch Marie and names like that, Kilmarie, is buried. They show the grave of St. Mulroa in Apple Cross, and um, 
Um, in the island of Rona, which is north of Ranasi, there's a giant's cave where the famous Mr. Oari Roderick MacLeod, the great ev ev evangelical preacher, the most famous of them, of the, of the evangelical revival in Skye, a man who until recently was a household word in Skye, just as a blind Monroe was. Mr. Oari, Mr. you see, the use of, was a grandson of the MacLeod of Rasi, who, um, who entertained Boswell and Johnson. A man, he was tremendously strict when he came under the influence of Harkerson and the evangelical revival. But he was also a great champion of the common people, so much so that he was called a traitor to his own landlord class. Now, this is, Ransi was called in the old days, Ellen of Fermora, the island of the big men. Now, it's a reference to the great what, rock, Creek Merkel, which stretches from Duncan to Scutri, to Scrapital. And uh, the Iglish Rig, the Church of Folsom, which is a great rock like a church, just at high water. Um, now, yeah, of course, you see, Razi, there was 14 townships cleared in the 19th century, in the 1850s. Brockholt Castle is the, um, the old castle of the MacLeods of Razi, or one of them, and a marvellous perch. Well, I'll read the, a bit of the, uh, the end of the poem. A little remnant of its people in the island of the big men, and black turrets in the sound between Scrapital and the sanctuary, mocking the flagstone of Mulroa and the giant's cave and Rona with its little rows of stone seats of men and women and children, listening to Mr. Ruari telling that here is no abiding city, rainy or no rainy. Oh, I should have explained that, you see. Um, there was, um, Mr. Rory was the first free church minister in Sky, and in Rona they had to preach, or he often had to preach in the open. Um, he, brought, he, um, who, he preached in the giant's cave. Rainey was the man who did the big grassy clearances. Uh, well, I'll... The sound is blue in the sun, and the sky naked, and the white bands of Crickverkill glittering to the south above the wood of birch and hazel, rowan and alder, and above the green braes where the young bracken and the young grass are a carpet over to the side of the pine wood that reaches Brochel Castle. Laughter and weeping, love, merriment and suffering, anger, hatred and spite, heroism, cowardice and heartbreak and times of gentle happiness have left Scrapital just as they left Brochel Castle before they left the crofters of Scrapital and of Ferns and Halleg and of every township of the fourteen desolate for Rainey's money and Mackenzie's. Rainey was the landlord, Mackenzie was a big sheep farmer who took over tack after tack after the townships were cleared. There are other, t now of course, between Rasi and the mainland, near Rasi, there's very deep water and of course there, uh, there are big naval exercises and you frequently see submarines. There are other towers in the sound, mocking the tower that fell from the top of the castle rock. Towers worse than every tower that violence raised in the world. The periscopes and sleek black sides of the ships of the death that killed the thousands of Nagasaki. The death of the great heat and the smoke. The death that would bring utter devastation even on the beauty that grew in Scrapital and is still there in spite of rain, his bad deed, his greed and social pride. But the submarines and the aeroplanes and the atom and neutron, the slow, sore poverty is not their gift, but the sudden holocaust that will fall from the sky and will rise from every bray and will cling to every beautiful meadow between the north end of the rock and the pine wood between Scrapital and the castle. 
greed and social pride left scraper without people and the iron band of laws that put a vice-like grip on the people threatening to, uh, to raise above them the black corn moors of hunger and the markle rocks of famine on which grow the poisonous bracken from which come the deadly rocket, hydrogen and uh, neutron bomb. Well, um, I'll read the garlic of that or part of it. For your big yagonia on the yell end of Hermora is to write in to his dingy at the scrape, but also home rake of fun at your yak, will rear zero on the water on I. Agassus, Agassus, Trehin, take a quach, see a hen, eris, vanus, clonia, a gay shakri, mesturuari, a ginch, and a hella shop, bala, that is, rainy, no rainy as. And you go on, Risha Grain, I guess the spare in Rusia, the spam and gallo creek vasculate yars, and the narty jesus, cone, a cullive his cowed in, cool in Yagas Fjarnas, a scone and broken wine, for a vill and rena hogs and fear hog, and umbrath war and no good to the cullicuish, a real cast of rohe. Then I'll leave out a few verse paragraphs and come. A tour in a erlingi, a fanager and tour, and tour of hoochje moloch krik a chastel, tour is smissen a gach tour of hoog einjord, er and hool, periscope and schlis and schlimme to her lungish of ours, a vara meet in a gesaki, bars in his force. The tochtje, a baas, a jennige leerkracht, gegen neer van wat je gaas aan de schrijfdel. En is een haan, haas, de ganjen kring of donoreen, die haan, de zeres voor. Well, I think that's perhaps enough of that just now. I'll go to one or two other poems. Crick and Picker is a very beautiful place in rocks. It means little rocks, but that is a name without any article. And uh, there's a place, Kemazolob, a strange name, which seems to mean the Bay of Scotland. The road goes and woods on both sides with a steep slope down to the sea. The rocks are above. There is a reference to places like Kamasala with that strange name, the coal, the Noka place, and the great dominant Skorningillian, which is the most dominant of the Kulan peaks in Roasi. And there's the Ronifying, uh, it's one of the limits of Kamasala. Kalaharja is the narrows between sky and uh, Roasi, which is only about two-thirds of a mile, the narrowest. And of course, um, away in the southeast, or perhaps straight south, there's the very beautiful hill, Mountain Blavin. Right, um, I am going through Cricket Baker in the darkness alone, and the surf on comes all up as a soak on smooth shingle. The curlew and the plover are crying down about the cool, and southeast of Scorning Ilian, blowing in the stainless moon. The light levels the sea flatness from Rona Frying is stretched north, and the current of Glahard is running south with swift, swift glitter. Crick and Picker, I'm a tall throw Crick and Picker, and so not all at the Slumheen, I guess a rot there comes a lot, but I hear near of all the Dean. And Gilly Pernix and Yetak a gay, a hears man cool. Sinjarayas eskuran in gilien plavin, si yaloch den smur. Strach gen sail jir klar mara runa fain a shin tje tua. Agis a stru un gula harja, a ruiku jes le lanyar loi. Now, next to Oskeg, the township where I was born, there is there are three pretty big fields for us. One is called the Big Park. And of course, it was it was always cultivated. Now here, there is a reference to this to the election, which means predestined, pre 
destination or any modern equivalent you can give it, the like to give it. And there are a few, of course. The election. The moon plays hide and seek, gliding among the clouds, the children chasing one another among the stoops in the big park. A night in late autumn when the election was dimmer and before the world was hard, stray, sharp furrows. When no boy or girl knew how many stooks were on the plain, every stook still mysterious before the field was a bare expanse. The election was not clear to us in the big park. On Allah fate the Gayali, Shul she a miskmusco, Hlang the Ruikail a miskatakan safarikabo. I can yet again eye in the Rivan Hognus Kieras, Munon soon a scrib and cry a jirach kiara, Skinisa gillen on yen, Kimatak for a rune, the Hula attack has jiaver, Munon tachag, a hlar moon. Now, this is next poem. I'm going to read this a political poem too. As well, a, well, it's called a palach about the Czech student who sacrificed himself at the time of the Russian takeover of Czechoslovakia. There is also a reference to the fact that there were 12 such self-immolations in France about the same time, but that did not get naturally the publicity that Pallax got. There was a time I thought of the Red Army came across Europe that Christ would not be bitter that it would not be with a bonfire as was seen in Prague, and that it would not be the heroic student that would go up and smoke, but the brittle firewood of money, a splendid heather burning, with a lying oil of roller stobbed on every tip. There is a ghost or two hill walking about this belting in gloom, Bullets in the pearl of chaise were crackling in the sleep and guns about the Volga and blood frozen and hard the passes of Gadaraman on the banks of the cold Neva. This little smoke is choking them and the flames against the bone, a gas from Hitler's chamber, a cloud above Hiroshima to the spirit and the grip of the generous heart and heroism, an argument with smoothies polite about the big house are ro rusting on the chains above the tattoo hole. There is no text in my words. There are a dozen pollocks in France. The war on the hull mean a nigger and haram jerag, tarshin nor a yor, but a pegahon el shereb, the family china iron marconorcus on the Prague, snuff bean curial and acher of sewers, no small. On the crean and the racket, be falloshkir and I, it lay all the break, and the walker and Gasclama Gerkach bar. A cora hung a crook crook with a thin shuff of grime, a pillar in the fair lache, a crack at the hnan sua in his gunnochen mon volga, his fiol, full siro, the croy and bialikin gadarma, said Bruich and I bower. In car and shock and hawkers and lasser is a grave. Now gas a home or himler, and he always kill the Roshamag and spirit has us a free horse and drain tish. The Arakamajic shimmerings at coast, gentlemen, high vol. Now very good and a slowry and a scum on Hadle Hall. Can you count Chickish and Hain? Had to some Palachas Rhine. Right. The big broad flagstone of the grave is on your shelf and George, your wife, between the sea and Ben Bulban, between Sligo and Lissadell, and your marvellous words are coming in the breeze from every side with a picture of the young, beautiful one in the television of every field. The sweet voice on the side of Ben Bulban from the one shapely young mouth that took his fame from Dermod 
because it was heard on a green become a screech with grief and with a noble anger and with the generous deeds that were sweet in the ears of Connolly and in the ears of his kind. You got the chance, William, the chance for your words, since courage and beauty had their flagpoles through your side. You acknowledged them in one way, but there is an excuse on your lips, the excuse that did not spoil your poetry, for every man has his excuse. I'll read the Gaelic. Alech mor lehan hua horstein sir George of the Venn, Eter vore spain gulo bain, eter an hlikach slis and ail, sat a vriar an miar valach a chinle osek og ach tu, ne jalam ne cheo ik a halon yon an telefish kachron. In gu bain a slis bain gulo bain yon un vi al chimir aop, a hu gachlu a giermat an chwal a zer grein a zer faas na skrit le braan, agus lish an irik u a zer lish lish na heich gan kare, Ba vain yng glwa sio conilis yng glwa sio ni hoosio. Gwarius yng corra mwyliam yng corram gada vriarin yn fag asgus yng oichus yng rhain brachtach rhodach liaich. Gabwyr yw o er yng ddo eich a lesgel yr da vilin. A lesgel nach da vain yw da fartach gyr ha lesgel ag ach dunio. Now, I refer to the great poet Dante, the lost mountain. The mountain rises above the wood, lost in the wood that is lost. And we have been broken on the board of our sun since the skies are tight. Lost in the decline of the wood, the many colored images of our aspiration, since the tortured streets will not go in the wood in a smooth synthesis. Because Vietnam and Ulster are heaps on ouch wi- uh, on ouch which of the bones, and the fresh rich trees pins on mountains of pain. In what eternity of the mind will South America or Belsen be put, with the sun on Skororen and its ridges cut in snow? Heartbreak is about the mountains and in the woods for all their beauty, though the restless sport of blood rages triumphantly in the young. The eternity of Dante and of Doga, Dugald, an old new life to a few, and the grey non-entity of the dust, a withered little comfort to more. Paradise without the paradise of his own people, the perplexity of the little free Presbyterian boy, his complaint and silent refusal, blasphemy in the throat of Geneva, and in the throat of Rome, the purgatory is gentler, the other robber on the tree, and Spartacus with his tortured army. Vain your howl, a vain your gary as coon a cullion, her howl on the cullion, her howl, this vrishtig in her plan or grain on a hana spare in town. Her howl on the new moon a cullion, a vain imag a hush page, a coon's nacht jet in a strat in cure just a cullion of a cochore. A coon cavel Vietnam so long and horror and rouch with snug crab. Ag is na crwn sai fyr yw'r ar na'n prin ychyn yr biawnd yn crai. Dyn hyr eich gain dyn sy'n gwrw yr America mae ges na belsyn. Ag is yw'r ea yn eich gwrwyrin sy'n ddiarau yn gyrch ys yn rhewchgo. Am brysio cream yn y biawnd yn sawns na cael dyn yr amoeche gyd a nŵl ferch gwlwaniwch yr virabwa y fwag yr sy'n oicri. She are a gant is go in the shell. Solas uhurek bican, and is nyoni glass no hurrah no cors the crean frown like barrack. Paras can far as a hoodjur gimme his to you and hood clary, the yeren as you the sark and hyphen and nahi yashineva. Agus yn nahaeth nôr oi y gyda pwrw gyda'r nas cywn yw Robert Ella yr a chrawn y Spartacus le yr amel tiwrt yw. There's a written reference to a great number of places in Rasi. There's a name, Gilecholm, son of the devotee of Colum. 
That's of St. Columba. That was a patronymic of the MacLeod chiefs of Rossi, the last of whom left Rossi to go to Australia in the early 1840s and who was not responsible for the clearance of Hallig. Well, there's a caption by myself, Time the deer is in the wood of Hallig. The window is nailed and boarded through which I saw the west, and my love is at the burn of Hallig, a birch tree, and she has always been between Inver and Milk Hollow, here and there about Bellahorn. She is a birch, a hazel, a straight, slender young rowan. In Scrapital of my people, where Norman and Big Hector were, their daughters and their sons are a wood going up beside the stream. Proud tonight the pine cocks crowing on the top of Crocara, straight their backs in the moonlight. They are not the wood I love. I will wait for the birch wood until it comes up by the cairn, until the whole ridge from Benedicta will be under its shade. If it does not, I will go down to Hellig, to the Sabbath of the dead, where the people are frequenting every single generation gone. They are still in Hellig, Maclean's and Macleod's, all who were there in the time of Machgillachalam. The dead have been seen alive, the men lying on the green at the end of every house that walls. The girls are wood of birches, straight their backs, bent their heads. Between the Lech and Ferns, the road is under mild moss, and the girls in silent bands go to Clochan as in the beginning, and return from Clochan from Sishnish and the land of the living, each one young and light stepping without the heartbreak of the tale. From the burn of ferns to the raised beach that is clear in the mystery of the hills, there is only the congregation of the girls keeping up the endless walk. Coming back to Hellig in the evening in the dumb living twilight, filling the steep slopes, their laughter a mist in my ears, and their beauty a film on my heart before the dimness comes down on the kyles. And when the sun goes down behind Duncana, a vehement bullet will come from the gun of love and will strike the deer that goes dizzily sniffing at the grass grown ruined homes. His eye will freeze in the wood. His blood will not be traced while I live. Now, the caption is Achim Afiag and Kalyahalik. A poor just thorn in Nirinunyag, Thor Fok, me an argin year, some ago like old Halik, na crui beha, Svairia, Vetrin Hunor, Polovania, howls of Osma Valahorn. I na peha na kaolt in na kur and gira hang over, and the scraper o machini for a taramat second more, and yearn and some meek nank halya a gal so as retove alone. Why were a noch na kalich yoish a gere mermuloch croch gara, jira and raim rishi yali, and yards and kalimagrai. For if a mirish of eh, cos in Yigimach and Karn, cos in me and Biara Gulu got ain a yeeke for skyl. Where it jakes and harness me a hollek, a yunsi saw, bet no marav, for a villa slug, a tahi kahun, gain a loch a galam. Hat has done a hollek, clon of yens, clon of clod, the down redeen is gil a hollum, homochus no mere of beau. The Firnan Laya Eridione, a count of Taha Avaum, Nahiana Nang Halyabeha, Jira Hondroim, Crow Minghaum. It are Yerk, Snafiano, Harat Moor, for Hony Hion, Snahiana Nabatan Sah, at all the Hlachan Marahus. As a Chile, as a Hlachan, a Sisnis, a cheer, and a meo, a Hulicheo, Koala. In Bristol, Crea, Scoil. O out of Yarnook was an ool in your cellar in your over Achnamion, and Yellow Con on an eon, a coma on a Koshak and Hound. The Chile Halleg and Sinesker and Sahavanich Valla Vio, the Yarnang and Lat and Cassa, and God a Christian Flores, and a co. Some boy in a sclaw and Machriam, and you can hear a girl in a cool. 
Snare harness grian er cool and canna, he pillar dean a gunagil. Spoiler and fear, Hanna Huan, all the snow, of no lorry can fjord. He crawled at a hole, so hallo, Hanna er lorrock and old rim Well, thank you very much. Then I don't consider the, um, the text of the translations uh, or sant in any way. And of course, I mean, the translation is a very, very difficult thing, because in order to be exact, you have to use too many words, far more words than the original, in order to be very exact, I would say, literally. But the actual original, do you feel that that's they're finished? You can't. You don't want it. Well, oh, that's only very, very rarely. I, 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 I mean, have ever made any change. The first poem I read, I actually did correct one mistake of grammar, but that was written in a semi, <laughs> semi sleep, <laughs> or sleep. May we have four hours, Master Dahl? Huh? Do we have for sure? Under sale. Under sale. They're asking for more. <laughs> oh, well, 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 all right, all right. Again, you see the Clarach is um, that bit of water, the south of the Sound of Rasi, that's between Rasi and Sky. The sound between Rasi and the mainland where you see the submarines is called the Inner Sound. My boat was on the shale and the Clorach laughing against its prow, my left hand on the tiller and the other on the winding of the sheet rope. On the second thwart to windward, darling, you sat near me, and your lit rope of hair about my heart, a winding of gold. God, if that course had been to the destination of my desire, the very butt of Lois would not have sufficed for my boat under sail. Gaelic foi hall. Mamma, takum foi hall, so far a gar a chrich for strong. Malav yar er falometer, and hail and so on your scourge. Er daratoch than the worry, who you loin em hor, er is the raw plashed coalan mumchain, a horn you gar. A yarn or on course, at Gumichanu ye join. Have a gumbuch the yos of her horn and the me hall. In that case, can I ask for one as well? <laughs> uh, can I ask for Van Gaal, the, the Gallic woman, you know, the one written about the same time as the Congress? It's fairly long, you know. Uh, yes, it is a little long, perhaps. <laughs> it's true. I'd like you to read it in Gaelic. Just read it in Gaelic? Yeah. Ah, well, that's not so bad. It's not so long when it's only one. Well. <laughs> I have something here which tells the pages things that on. A fach could we you wish for in the upper of Achke? A fach go collars at their heel, restry and yan lace gain. And who all of visioner a dream follows share ever malus croy, so we as rea traum er cool can croop to walk croy. Hanach gadu yich gan hur in the prorain a glor in misknen glatach karach shir for allas clear of a lawn. In harach show agus a chais gach fiket yarach von an hoos. Haranish in yemenuar humpeag a klanyas to a shun hoor. Skach fiket fur hair triel chaili sound of buinim la. And so on the hoos nagan glash tarshin mean at hila glor. I guess laver take was home, was that high, yeah, and I'm a Hawaii. I guess like in Hosna, Gian, a corp, Gasa, Hurigu, and the way. This real a team, and he had to have drove to a far dike bock. The Alasia no Hosna, Croy, his class a cattle sewer, and you know. I was wondering, really, two questions. Alicia Vruich. Yes. You speak somewhat regretfully about the amount of time and effort you had to give to your teaching years in Plockton. 
I said, I don't need a plot. <laughs> They're not on their plot. How much do you, do you regret that so much of your energy had to go in to teaching? And do you wish you had more time to, for your Well, um, the difficulty about... No, I don't regret it essentially, but the difficulty about teaching, school teaching, is that it's such an exhausting job. I grew to like it, but it is an exhausting job which leaves a person at four o'clock and they're just useless, almost useless for anything and one begins to have a little revival at the weekend, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, um, it is, but on the other hand, um, I doubt this business of being a full-time poet. Well, very few people are, they're writers of other kinds as well. But, um, yes, I mean, uh, I got to like teaching, both in Edinburgh and in Mull and in Skye and in Plockton, but... Um, the main thing was that I found it so terribly tiring. It took so much nervous energy. So much nervous energy, perhaps my techniques were bad and so on, and that I used to exhaust myself and, uh, more than was necessary if I had, more than I need to have done if I had been a better teacher, but I don't know. I, there are other people, and among them people present, who know it only too well. Can I ask, uh, do you have ambitions still to write uh, different kinds of poetry, or have other milestones which you still have in view? Well, I would like to finish this longish poem, The Cave of Gold. Uh, there are three parts of it finished, but uh, and perhaps a short fourth part, but the fifth part is... I know I have taken rather a difficult thing, which... Um, and, of course, um, <laughs> when the habit grows well is when it's hard to give up, but... Um, uh, the I seem to nowadays to be so... So many other things, uh, well, things with, uh, with literature. Uh, one thing, of course, um, translation is an awful business. The fact that you, uh, that you have to translate in order to get uh, publishing uh, at all. The translation is very, very, very irksome, really. Very. And it's very unsatisfactory to one. My own translations there are yes, very, very pretty literal, except that sometimes I would have to use two or three words to get the... Um, for well, one word uh, would do in Gaelic. Similarly, of course, if you are translating from Gaelic, from English into Gaelic, you would have the same, or to any language, I suppose. But, of course, you see, Gaelic is very, very much outside the main European traditions. That makes it more difficult, I think. I think it does make it more difficult. On the other hand, Gaelic, there's one thing about Gaelic, about the translation, Gaelic is syntactically very, very, very flexible. Awfully good at, um, at expressing degrees and places of emphasis with natural inversions, the use of particles, which I don't think English is as good at as it once was. Hence, um, 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 uh, that is one of the big difficulties in translation, in, in, trans, in translation um, f uh, from Gaelic. This fact that um, 
you can have perfectly natural inversions and inversions with the use of particles, which is very difficult, very difficult to reproduce exactly in English. But of course there'll be a lot of things in English that'll be very difficult to reproduce in Gaelic. Could you tell us a little more about symbolism in the Cave of Gold? Well, um, you see, I take first. You see, it is dealing with extremes of human behavior, such as, um, for instance, the fact that some people will risk their lives even for a kind of bravado, that some people will do it for uh, high mo motives, self-sacrifice for the sake of the community, for the sake of other people, that some people will do it for a kind of um, 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 a kind of um, uh, what shall I say, world weariness, or or a death wish, or many other reasons. Now, you see, the first piper goes in in the legend. His pipes are heard saying, I wish that I had three hands, two to the, to the, um, to the pipes, and one to the sword. But the second, on my part, the second man has four hands which doesn't avail them. And then there's the actual thing about what what impulse I uh, what impels people to do to do to go to to go to extremes especially the um, extremes which uh, which are very very much a danger um, I mean a danger to their own lives you know, um, I echo some of the things that are used. There is a pibroch about it, and as usually without with pibrochs, there some part of the pibroch has words. Now, the point about the cave of gold is the legend is that people, certain people, can understand what the pipes are saying. That's an old motif. And at least in Gaelic, uh, well, I don't know if it's another folklore, they can understand it. And the first piper, um, he's heard saying that uh, this will happen. Uh, kids, goat kids will be, uh, will be goats on the rocks, the calves, rutting cows, the boys at breast, armed men and so on before he comes back from the cave of gold. But why? Uh, and then he, he, he mentions, you see, he talks about being the, um, the fact that there's only, he's only got two hands. And then there is a strange turn about, uh, about uh, in, the, in the thing about being deserted by his own people, as it would appear to be, and he's addressing, of all things, with something that appears to be the harp. The word kruch is used, but it's doubtful whether he means that. And he finishes with, well, I don't say he finishes, but all the words that I have heard about is the green bitch. Wearying him. Now the word Sarik in Gaelic originally meant to destroy, but it has come to mean to oppress, to, 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 to weary utterly. But it is kept, you know, as words do, a bit of its original, a bit of its original meaning. And there is a strange business about the innocent. The, his own dog, which does come back, but without a hair. Well, of course, you see, that has, I, that's, I would say, you see, that has uh, uh, important symbolical um, um, impl implications. 
But um, the difficulty about the poem is that, uh, uh, well, there is also the fact what actually imp the actual <laughs> business of what you might say are how he's impelled to go on by his own music. Or it would appear to be that he is. Mind you, the interpret. there's so many. Uh, I am sort of adding things to what I have heard in the, in the, in the legend of the, of the Cave of Gold. And it's one of my earliest memories, hearing my grandmother who died, uh, not yesterday, 1923, singing it. She died when I was a bit about not quite 12, and she was full of that uh, kind of thing, and had, though she was over 80 then, a wonderful voice. Well, I thought it was, and uh, 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 her sons and daughters seemed to have had that. Uh, uh, th th that too, though I don't have it. Um, well, you see, I suppose, you see, um, you see, I came to, um, to you know, maturity during the, when this great symbolist moment in European literature was pretty well. It had reached its peak, you know, with people like Valéry in France, Eliot, MacDermid, Yeats, um, Yeats, um, um, Bloch and Russia, and so on. But a thing that I am very, very interested in is this business, and I know it makes for obscurity and all that, where the actual image becomes a symbol. And it would appear to me that if you are going to produce, you know, what you might, well, I shouldn't perhaps say it, in very intellectual poetry, you have either to use, well, I don't know, I may be utterly wrong on this, a plethora of abstract language or symbols. But there is the difficulty of the symbol, the difficulty of the, the, the actual exactness, the exactness of meaning, you see. And, of course, uh, for one thing, garlic is not so rich in abstract. Well, uh, abstract language as, as, I mean, uh, you know what I mean by abstract language, language for, as English is, but it's uh, richer than one would imagine. I, it is richer than one imagined because of the great exercise of a more or less democratic theology. <laughs> democratic in the sense that it was discussed by a very big lot of, of the people and where you have a theological a language capable or that deals with theological questions, well, that's a long way towards, uh, towards um, a kind of a philosophical uh, language um, for philosophy. But I suppose I have been very much affected by the fact that I grew up at the time I, at the time I did, I gather that symbolism is not fashionable nowadays. Well, things like that come and go. However, um, I don't know. I don't know if that. Um, if my answer is really satisfactory, I'm afraid it is. <laughs> you were talking earlier about uh, Yeats and just some of the things you said just now. Uh, an Irish airman foresees his death, yeah. that, uh, the lonely impulse of delight. I wondered if that was a poem that interested you. 
Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I was always, I was always very, very, very interested in that. I remember the first time that I was going, we were going from um, Limerick up to Galway and so I rode in to Kiltartan. And I was very, very, very much affected. Very much affected. Oh, I think Gates is a marvellous, I think he's a marvellous poet, really.